This is the FM Girl Channel of All India Radio. In the program News Analysis, we now bring you a dialogue on Interim Budget 2014-15 at a glance. The participants are V. Raghuraman, former Secretary General, as a chair, and Arjun J. Chaudhary, economic journalist. Mr. Raghuraman, today we'll be discussing, of course, about uh, the interim budget announced by the Finance Minister in Parliament. The budget has uh, multiple uh, components. But let's start uh, with uh, the reduction in the excise duty as far as indirect taxes are concerned for capital goods, uh, consumer durables, auto and mobile handset to devices. How do you see this move, in fact, encourage manufacturing in the economy? The IIP, which has the numbers have been actually quite uh, depressing this year, and we expect a negative growth, that point minus 2.2 percent compared to 1 percent growth last year, which means that there needs to be some ways by which we can spur manufacturing. In fact, we are far beyond what the National Manufacturing Competitive Council had predicted and said that we should increase our manufacturing to GDP to 25 percent in about I mean, within 10 years. But unfortunately, we didn't see any of that happening. So one of this is that how to really rev up and also see that the manufacturing revives and this is actually a small step in that direction and I'm sure with the small maneuverability which the finance minister has had, definitely this will make good uh, impression because the automobile sector has been going through a very difficult phase. This is something which is, I think, positive in the budget. What about uh, agriculture finance in terms of increasing the credit to agricultural farmers and the interest subvention schemes for deferred payments and for prompt payments, which is 2 and 3 percent respectively. Yeah, especially on the prompt payments, because so far earlier we didn't have this with respect to prompt payment. In fact, these are all loan waivers. To that extent, it's incentivizing the agriculture sector. And I'm sure because in the last 10 years, we see the agricultural growth has been stabilizing and also progressing. And this year we have had record production of food grains and this implies that the sector needs to be kept in robust condition and to that extent the extension of the credit by a lack crores and also the subvention really goes well because this is not just populist but it is actually something just doable and I don't think that this has any great bearing on actually putting hold into the budgets. What about the service tax exemption for some categories of agricultural produce? Do you see that benefiting farmers in the medium to long run? Not only farmers, but also the consumers. For example, all these add to the cost, to that extent, especially the service tax. But of course, this uh, makes a good challenge to the next government, exactly how they are going to mop up revenues. But for the present, yes, it looks uh, definitely nice because we should see not only the farmers but all the consumers and the overall cost of farm produce is kept down, especially from the farm to the fork. How do you really keep the prices down? To that extent, sure, it makes sense. In the budget, the non-plan expenditure, which includes subsidies, now you're talking about food, fertilizer and oil subsidies, uh, totaling more than 12 lakh crore rupees, was this along expected lines? This is the biggest challenge which we have because you see over the years we have not corrected the situation and also adjusted prices, taxes and subsidies to take care of the looming reality which has really dawned on us now and it has ballooned to such an extent. It's very difficult for us to contain it. In fact, this is a big problem and I don't think there are any solutions seen. The intentions of the government are not getting translated into the action because of the political and uh, populist pressures. I think these are very difficult and these three are really continuing to show that these are challenges which any new future budgets will have to face. Finance Minister spoke about uh, minimum tariff uh, protection for exporters and ensuring that input costs through imports also come down. How do you see that rolling out? Right now, if you see, the imports are quite uh, down, especially non-oil imports, which is a very, very uh, depressing thing. So if you want to spur the economy and also the capital goods industry to really take off, we need that the imports should really go up. And this can be facilitated only if we have the right kind of signals which actually see that the stagnant exports really take off because we haven't seen good export numbers and which means that unless we give the right kind of indications of supporting export and export finance, 
it's not going to happen to that extent surely some message is given with respect to improving the export climate and also inducing the attendant imports so that the manufacturing sector can revive so to that extent i think it does give some signal the finance minister spoke about the public private partnership model for infrastructure the infrastructure development fund how do you see this uh, growth model being implemented in the coming time we have been having this type of intentions of the government for last 10 years but unfortunately we haven't been having the right kind of signals that the ppp models which have been tweaked are really working if we see the kind of protests against toll booths if we see the problems with respect to power tariffs etc all this indicate that uh, there are problems of mopping up revenues and also meeting the subsidies which the people desire and these ppp models again have come under cloud with uh, right uh, now several indications that the cag and other kinds of interventions by government which are not earlier in the contracts are being introduced actually main point is the government whether how it will be able to handle and also see that the public private partnership is made reality and this is the big challenge which is coming and it is actually it's a thing which has been left for the future but i don't think immediately things can be changed main point is we have to see whether the ppp models which the government have been trying out and the type of changes which are made are going to really make the difference because merely making a financial statement and also budget allocation based on that is more a matter of conjecture and it's for the future government to see whether the types of things which are being initiated will be carried out or whether further changes are necessary relaxation of foreign direct investment norms at least in six sectors that i can think of telecommunications pharmaceutical civil aviation power trading exchanges and multi brand retail now clearly this is not exactly time bound it will be for the future how do you see this generating employment in the economy provided that we are able to carry through because we have some backlog and also sanctity of contracts and also government reneging and also going back on what it had actually implied plus the, the investment will come in not now but in the future yeah but it will all depend on the way we handle the past investments and also the way we are seeing that the sanctity of contracts and also reneging or say back dating of certain types of measures taken i think this will have greater impact and saying that fdi has been opened has no meaning because many states we are resenting which the previous governments had done so we are not knowing exactly whether these will proceed with the next government coming in so these are all things which will have to wait for the new government to come in till then i think these are all hopeful and also best intentions for the expanding uh, labor market uh, the nsdc the national skill development uh, corporation is importing skills so that uh, there is i think this is something which is very good and let us hope and i don't think any new government or anybody will actually renege on this and this is something very much needed to upgrade the skills of our entire young population so that you know their future is secured and also jobs can be created and met because there are a lot of jobs where skill sets are not available to that extent ncsd initiatives are definitely going to bear fruit and they will give us the demographic dividend which we have been expecting well speaking about demographic dividend you need to know understand what the population specifics are really all about uh, the aadhaar system uh, which is also encouraging financial inclusion was mentioned in the finance minister's uh, a speech regarding the performance of the government uh, would you agree with it definitely but the question is that we i hope that the courts and others will really take cognizance of it and see to it unlike the lpg in which case they said that it is not a requirement so i think it will depend on how the courts also go with what the legislature does and it's important for us to see that the intentions again are workable and doable finance minister also spoke about the performance of the reserve bank of india and seb in terms of stabilizing the foreign exchange market how would you rate their performance in ensuring that the rupee to the dollar is range bound rbi has been giving good response and also they have been responding to right situations and they have also been very pragmatic in saying they don't have a magic wand and surely there has been some confidence and we find the rupee is range bound and we have very good expectations to believe that rbi and sebi has come out with some of the rulings as well as policy measures which i am sure will bring in more transparency into the capital markets these are good signs 
Uh, what about uh, macroeconomic indicators in terms of clearly the index of industrial production minus 0.6 percent that was disappointing but inflation has come down in terms of the wholesale price index and the cpi cpi which is uh, below nine percent now and it is now uh, linked to rbi bonds in terms of what the payout to the investor is do you see these incentives as benefiting the economy as a whole and also ensuring government performance? actually the government uh, according to the prior minister when he says the red line has not been breached on fiscal deficit has been kept within 4.8 percent in fact it is 4.8 6% is quite an encouraging sign, but what is really giving the real fear is what he has left for the future. And that's where you had a lot of window dressing with respect to revenue mop-up and a lot of non-tax revenues have been generated with milking the PSUs and also the manner in which one-time settlements with respect to the case of Access Bank, etc. There will also be 2G auctions uh, which yeah, have brought in a fair amount of revenue for the government. all one time. So I think to that extent fine, but I think the future finance minister or whoever presents will have great challenges because many of them are going to be actually slipping over to the next financial year and that's where we have to see how they pan out. Budget management is all about uh, how you're able to employ your resources for the growth model that we talk about. Are the GDP figures in line with your expectations? The finance minister announced first half 4.6% growth, second half expected is 5.2% growth. Last year when you look at, we thought that the economy had bottomed out. One of the key indicators, and it is agriculture which has bailed us out. In fact, if you look at the industrial production, it is not at all encouraging. And unless that picks up, I don't think we have seen the bottoming yet. And that's where the tweaking of the excise duty today may have some sort of a salutary effect if we feel within the time of the interim budget and the real budget presentation comes for the year. But today it's premature to say that we have bottomed out and also whether the economy is on the rising curve or not. This uh, financial year, we're talking about 2013 to 14, but comparisons have been drawn with a 10-year-ago period uh, by the Finance Minister P. Chidamram when he talks about output then and output now. So he spoke about energy like power and coal in terms of capacity and production. Do you see a, a definite improvement in terms of output? Today, you find that in spite of all that kind of figures presented, people are remember only the what's happening around now and people's expectations are very high and if you look at that as measure their expectations which were there and to what's happened in the last one year i think there's a very big gap and i don't think that this gap can be repaired or say managed by anyone in a short period of time and for making the economy to revive we need more measures and also better coordination and also the manner in which we will be able to see that we are able to meet performance with conformance to rules and procedures in the government themselves are not clear about. I think this is much more important to put that in order. What are the limitations of an interim budget at this stage in terms of what the finance minister has announced and what he has left for the future? The finance minister has his hand style. He cannot change the basic slabs and also major things like the GST, direct tax code, it is not getting implemented. So he can't do any of that. But what he has done, which is only tweaking the excise and also see whether it's possible for us to see that imports can be facilitated better. To that extent, I think what he has done surely stands in good step. But if we are looking for any game-changing efforts by him, it is not possible in the interim budget. To that extent, surely he has done his job, and I think he needs our commendation on that. Thank you, Mr. Raghuraman, for being with us on the program and speaking to us extensively on your views about the interim budget announced in Parliament. You are listening to our dialogue on interim budget 2014-15 at a glance. The participants were V. Raghuraman, former Secretary General, ASO Cham, and Arjun J. Chaudhary, economic journalist. It came to you in the program News Analysis, produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.nic.in. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.